Today, uh, we will talk about the DNA viruses. In DNA viruses, uh, you know, the shortcut for DNA viruses, I'm sure you know, because the whole world remembers the DNA viruses with this shortcut called HAPI, okay? H-H-A-P-P-P-I, HAPI. This is the shortcut. So what does this stand for? H stands for, you know, herpes. So this is a question can be asked in your exam, which of the following got DNA viruses except or they can twist however they want. Okay, so don't forget. So herpes H and uh, uh, another H is for hepatitis B virus, HBV, hepatitis B virus, yeah, hepatitis B virus. And A virus, you know, that is adenovirus, adenovirus, okay. And then P for, we have what, pox, parvo, and then PI for papilloma, papilloma, papilloma. Okay, we got it. Now, again, uh, in the DNA viruses, there are some naked and enveloped, right? So, already we have discussed about this naked virus. Naked is what? What do you do? If a girl has to get a pap smear, she has to go naked. The shortcut for the naked DNA virus is pap. Who are these pap? One pap is P A R O, parvo, and then adeno. Adenovirus, we already spoke. And then this is this other piece stands for papilloma. Papilloma. Okay. Remember here, pox doesn't come. Pox is not here. So it's A, A, papa, papa, papa will come. Okay. Not the pox. So in exception, you know, in, in your exam, you can have pox. So pox is not. Pox is not coming in the uh, naked virus. Okay. Pap smear, just pap. Parvo, adeno, papilloma. That's it. This is the basic review. You got it right? Herpes, hepatitis B, adeno, pox, parvo, and papilloma. And you already know that. If you remember, once again, to remind you, this is the smallest virus. The smaller, the sorry, the pox is the biggest virus. The biggest one is your pox virus. I told the big box. Big box. Parvo, the choti, choti, pari, choti, pari. She is the smallest one. Smallest one. We'll talk about this more now. Okay? And rest we'll discuss. All we talk. I don't know. We already spoke about. I don't know. It's a space vehicle. Adnan Swami is go to the space space vehicle. Okay, these are the things which I'm going to bring here and there so that you know this is like real revision and that you will not forget anything. Okay. Yes. Now let's start with the viruses. Herpes virus. So when you talk about the herpes viruses, there is you know uh, the types like how you going to make the types. I'm just going to write it here now. Herpes virus. You know there is HHV. Her uh, human herpes virus one. And then human herpes virus 2, then human herpes virus 3, we have. And then also we have HHV 4, and then HHV 5, yeah. And then HHV, which one? HHV, your 6 and 7, somewhat they come together. So they separately will put it there. And then your HHV 8. These are the viruses. So how to remember? It's very easy. You don't have to think too much. HHV1, HHV1 is other name, you know, that's basically your herpes simplex virus 1. We have herpes simplex virus 1 and then we have herpes simplex virus 2. So no confusion. It is the same. 1, 1, 2, 2. Okay. 3. What about 3? Three? 3, uh, you know, uh, varicella zoster virus. That's a chickenpox causing virus. We're going to talk about it soon. Zoster virus. Here, look at this one. It's very easy. There are, this Z has a three strokes. One. Two, three. So three strokes. Oh yeah. So three strokes is for zoster. Very easy, right? Zoster. So you'll not forget. So three is for zoster. Herpes zoster virus. Okay. You can have. It's very important. You will definitely have question based on this, which is HHV one, which is HHV two, three. Anything they can ask to confuse you. Okay. So zoster is popular one among them. So please don't confuse. Two, one and two is the herpes simplex one, but three is your varicella zoster virus, which causes chicken pox or shingles in adult. Okay. We'll talk about that soon. Now HH four, four. How to remember the four? You know which viruses that I'm talking. It's the Epstein Barr virus. B bar is basically B A R R. So it means four letters. Four letters is four. So that is Epstein Barr virus. Epstein Barr virus. Okay, got it? Epstein Barr virus. Five. Five is basically, you must be knowing already, CMV, cytomegalovirus the biggest virus of the herpes. If you remember, I told you megalo, M for megalo, megalo. Okay, so how to remember this? This is also easy. See, if you want to remember, you take the M, there are uh, no, cytomegalovirus, that's the biggest one. Megalo means big, okay? Now, how to remember here? Remember, this is C here. C ka, you turn it, make it ulta, like this. Okay, it's ho jayega. Bas, ho gaya. 
CMV, cytomegalovirus. We're going to talk about that later. Okay, so five over here. Now, how to remember the six and seven? Six and seven, see, you, it's, it starts with, yes, six and then seven. So there is, yes, yes, two S's, right? So usually the question asked is the disease, it is causing both of them. They cause the disease called Roseola, Roseola infantum, okay? Roseola infantum, yes. So that is very simple, Roseola. The disease which is causing Roseola. Okay, uh, also it's called exanthema uh, subitum. It's also called exanthema subitum. We talk in the coming uh, classes. Eight. Eight is very easy because you know that. Can I can I get an answer? HHV eight. What is the, the what is that cancer it causes in the HIV patient or in HIV patient? That's the most common cancer. What is the disease? I think you guys already guessed. You're right. It is Kaposi sarcoma. If somebody doesn't know it, please remember Kaposi sarcoma. Kapos Kaposi. K -A -P -O -S. My, my spelling is a little bit this thing. Okay, don't mind it. But the idea is you have to know the answer. Kaposi sarcoma. Okay, Kaposi sarcoma. So uh, what is this Kaposi sarcoma? It is the most common cause of cancer in HIV patient. Okay, that is usually it's a vascular cancer. We'll talk about it later. So is ka, how to remember? Is ka ke yaad karna? K is K. K ka, if you do a little bit alteration, it becomes like 8, right? It will become like an 8. Up, uh, you just put like this, it becomes like an 8. So it's very simple. Okay, you can expect a question, very sure question. They'll confuse you with a Zoster or a EBV or CMV or HHV. This, this one is repeatedly asked question, 6 and 7. And Kaposi Sarcoma, obviously, one of the highly expected questions. Okay, that's it. So this is a general part of the DNA virus, the virus which we're going to talk about now in a while. Okay, so now let's start about individual virus. H now we'll talk about the HHV1. That is your herpes simplex number one virus. So what are the things? So if you see the picture, you can get this picture. So this is the typical picture. You see this dried, you know, the, it's, it's, it was a vesicle. It was basically a vesicle, vesicle which is dried out later on. Okay. So when you see this type of vesicles on the lips, okay. And see here, this patient is having around this uh, face and this thing. I'll tell you what it is. So this one, mostly what happened? This is the herpes simplex. It's your herpes simplex virus. One. Why? Because anything above the waist region is one and below the waist region is two. Two means it's mostly genital. One means anything above but your face, gaze, anywhere it can be. So this is the one, HSV1, which is around the uh, lips region. It can pass here. Okay, vesicles. And here, what about this one? This is also, you can see all the vesicles which is dry uh, and it's on the uh, face and neck. Face and neck means kya hota hai? You're giving a punch. Who is giving a punch? The wrestlers. Wrestlers. So this question also frequently asked, wrestlers. That is what it's called as, it is called, uh, you remember, gladiatorum, gladiatorum, herpetic or herpes gladiatorum. We're going to talk about gladiator, gladiatorum, because gladiatorum means what? They're the wrestlers, they're fighters. So because when you give a punch, you know, that thing causes, you know, uh, stimulate your virus and then virus uh, manifests as the vesicles. Okay, that's, so this is the, uh, in the picture what I want to show. So what is this one? This is important in ophthalmology, but definitely in ophthalmology, they're going to talk about this, but still I would like to give you, see how it looks. It looks so beautiful, you know, it's beautiful. So like a dendritic ulcer, we call it as a dendritic ulcer. Dendritic ulcer, the characteristic uh, for which one? Herpes simplex again, herpes simplex virus one, HSV one. Okay, dendritic ulcer. It happens in the eye. Okay, that's it. So these are the few picture-based questions they might ask in the exam. So I'm just talking about it. Okay, now herpes labialis. So when you talk about herpes labialis, this is the in uh, in the HSV one manifestation, which is the most common manifestation of uh, HSV one. If someone asks this question, this is herpes labialis. Okay, HSV one most common manifestation is herpes labialis. That is in the lip region. Labialis means it's in the lips region. Whitlow. Whitlow means it's in the finger. You can get a uh, you know uh, in the finger the when there is this uh, vesicles happen in the finger you call it as a vitlo okay vitlo gladiatorum already told you whom it's in wrestlers everything is a question here labialis can be a question herpetic vitlo can be a question this all are what caused by your hsv1 we are talking about just the hsv1 virus vitlo herpetic gladiatorum is in, it's in the wrestlers this question was also asked in wrestlers which type of lesion this is gladiatorum and your dendritic ulcer we just spoke I showed you now and temporal lobe encephalitis and the favorite ganglion the favorite ganglion for your uh the favorite ganglion for your uh the favorite ganglion excuse me
So the favorite site, when you talk about the favorite site, which is the favorite site of this herpes virus, usually herpes viruses, they live in the uh, neurons, that's in the ganglion. And whenever the situation is favorable, situation arises, it comes out and causes the, uh, you know, infections, you know that one. So the favorite site for your herpes simplex virus one is your trigeminal ganglion. For HSV2, it is, can I get an answer? Sacral ganglion, exactly. Okay, for one, it is mostly the trigeminal ganglion. Okay, so this you have to remember. Okay, now let's go. So this is, a, this is, can you guess this also? This is in the genital. Uh, okay, this is HSV1. We have completed with your HSV1 now. Now let's go to the next part. Okay, that is your HSV2. So this is a genital, typical genital ulcers. These are typical vesicles, multiple vesicles, okay? Then you have multiple painful vesicle, multiple painful vesicle. In a question, if you have multiple painful vesicle, the most common cause in genital, that is especially in a genital region, it could be in the penis or it may vulva, vagina, wherever it is. When you have multiple painful vesicle, it is highly suggestive of HSV2 virus, herpes simplex virus 2. You got it? Of course, the another, uh, the painless ulcer is, Syphilis. These are the two common ulcers. When you talk about ulcer, genital ulcer diseases, remember, if it's painful, it is herpes. If it's non-painful, it's syphilis. Based on other clinical, we can differentiate it, but just, just remember for now, okay? We'll talk about that in the uh, syphilis in the bacteriology class. Okay. Now, HSV2. So as I told you, anything below waist, that is HSV2. Above is 1 and below is 2. Yeah. So, uh, and then... That's what I already discussed about this. This is usually because the genital painful ulcer. Favorite site is sacral ganglion. Question, question. There it was trigeminal. Uh, uh, here it is the sacral ganglion, the favorite sites. Okay. And recurrent meningitis. This question was asked. What is a recurrent meningitis? The other name for this, the recurrent meningitis, call, usually the recurrent meningitis is very common in the HSV2 compared to HSV1, especially uh, for newborns, you can say. Newborn is very common. Recurrently, it happens. And, uh, of course, what's the name of this? Molaretz. M-O-L-L-A-R-E-T-S. Molaretz. Molaretz meningitis. Molaretz meningitis. Okay. This was a question asked. I remember even in my PJ exam, this question was there. Okay. Molaretz meningitis is simply caused by herpes simplex virus. And then, if they want to specify, you write two is most common, but doesn't matter. It is, uh, herpes simplex is the most common. Not zoster, not CMV, not uh, EBV, not other. It's just the herpes simplex. Okay, molarex recurrent, recurrent meningitis. You got it. This is a very common here. I put it this one. This is definitely expected question. Uh, in picture-based question, with this, you can have it. What you can see here? What you can see? You can see here a lot of single, single cells. But here you can see multiple, so, nucleus. That is called what? I think you guys are guessing right. What is this? I gave a clue. Multiple nucleus so it is multi nucleated giant cell m and g c okay multi nucleated giant cell multi nucleated giant cells so that was the question uh, multi nuclear giant cell is specific way in herpes virus simplex also zoster also but simplex may be very very common in herpes simplex it's very very common okay m and g c and uh, what is the smear the special smear we make for to check the m and g c from the lesion, vesicular lesion, whatever, we make a smear. What is the smear name specifically? There's a special name for that's called Sang smear. That's called Sang smear, okay? It's basically you smear it, uh, you take that skin, superficial skin peel, and then you make a smear, and then you stain with the gemsa, and then you check for the multinucleated giant cell. Important question. Multinucleated giant cell means herpes simplex. There's no other way you'll forget it. If it just if it appears, you just have to tell. Yeah, there's one multinucleated giant cell, Vartin Pinkidley cell also. That will come in the measles. We'll talk about it later. Vartin Pinkidley cells. That's also multinucleated giant cells. That is for another part. But here in herpes, direct sang smear, multinucleated giant cell, herpes simplex, most common cause. Okay, that's it. Now, next one. Uh so. Uh, so that's what I already told you. So this is a question can be asked. What is the smear name? Sang smear. And then what is the gym stain we do? What do you see? You'll check, you'll, you'll find M and GC, multinucleated giant cells. This one, this is the multinucleated giant cells. Okay. So that's a question, question. This is an important question. You can expect in your exam. Okay. Next. Uh, HHV3. I already told you, varicella zoster. Yeah, how you remember three means very simple. Once again, repeating three strokes. One zoster like this, three strokes, zoster. Zoster has three strokes, so that is HD3. So, uh, what it causes in children? Children, of course, you call it as a chicken pox. Chicken pox. 
chicken pox in adults it is called as shingles 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 in adults okay yes what is the root respiratory most common respiratory average uh, incubation period is 15 days and chicken pox usually see the, the this is a bit difference between chicken pox and shingle one is in children one is an adult of course it is a vesicle the, the rashes uh, you can get vesicle and vesicle becomes you know crusted ulcer etc we call it a pleomorphic lesion pleomorphic lesion one thing you have to remember, if you remember in your childhood, when you are getting chicken pox or you've seen in the children, the chicken pox is usually bilateral. You can see on the both sides of the body completely, right? Centripetal. Starts in the face and then it goes to the trunk and then the flexor part of your hand. Okay? Chicken pox. That is easy. You have seen a lot of kids. You must have seen your uh, relatives, your known, whoever, the kids. But for adults, you can see in adults, if you see, it's mostly unilateral. The shingles is usually unilateral. You can see in one particular side you can have the rash this painful typical vesicular and then it becomes pleomorphic okay so that's important when unilateral and bilateral that's one difference i want to stress here okay so now this is a chicken pox a typical chicken po uh, chicken pox so how to say uh it's not necessary that just the picture and you will say chicken pox but usually there are other rashes also other disease other uh, viruses also which causes a lot of rashes like this Right. So now this is the one. See, I'm talking about here because this you see you have different types of lashes. So that's called pleomorphic. Pleo, pleomorphic rashes. Pleomorphic rash. You call it a centripetal because it starts from the face and then it goes to the where? To the trunk, back, and then to your uh, limbs, flexor part. Okay. So centripetal pleomorphic rash. Very important. And bilateral. It's bilateral. Okay. That's important. That's important question. You should know. Okay. So bilateral centripetal starts on the face and goes. That's also called multiple crops or the other name just I told you. It's a pleomorphic. Means variety of rashes at the same time. You can see a um, uh, you can see a vesicular rash. You can see ulcerative rash. You can see a new macular papular arising. So this variety of rashes are called this thing. So now can you tell me what's the complication? What's the complication? Someone is having chicken pox. Uh, so what is the, the most common complication is your, what happened? The rash gets secondary bacterial infection. So the most common complication is secondary bacterial infection. It could be staphylococcus, it doesn't matter. Usually staphylococcus, but that's a secondary, most common complication is secondary bacterial infection on that rash. What is the serious one? What is the serious complication is your, it's called pneumonia, varicella pneumonia. So you got it here. See, two questions you already answered. You know already two questions. The most common complication is secondary bacterial infection. Secondary bacterial infection. You will have a question on this. And then the most severe complication is your pneumonia. Pneumonia. Varicella pneumonia. We also call it as varicella pneumonia or pneumonia or varicella pneumonia. Whatever. Okay. You got it. Now, the uh, Ray syndrome. You know Ray syndrome. Ray syndrome is simply a fatty liver disease. So, can you tell me which is the drug? When, uh, when, a, herpes, when a patient is having this herpes, okay, so, uh, uh, I mean, when a patient has a chicken pox or shingles or whatever, you give one medicine and you get raised. Can I hear the answer? If you're saying aspirin, then you're right. Aspirin is a drug. So, you, when this patient is taking aspirin, then what they'll get? They'll get a fatty liver disease. That's it. It's very simple, expected question. Again, so, in a patient with a chicken pox, patient with a chicken pox, when you are using the aspirin, patient will get what? Race syndrome. Race syndrome. Okay, that's it. Infected period is very, very important. You know that what, how many days before and how many days after the rash is dangerous? Two days before the rash and five days after the rash. Patient is very infective. Five days after the rash. Okay. So two days before the rash, only when just the rash is just going to start from that day, two days before, and the rash happens, all the pleomorphic, everything comes. After the rash also, when the rash has started to get crusted, that is also dangerous. Still five days after rash, it's infective. So two, five, you have to remember many times repeated. This will be repeated in a PSM also. But then, yeah, remember, this is a PSM question also. But also in uh, uh, microbiology, you can remember two days before the rash and five days after the rash. Okay. Chicken box in pregnancy. So chicken box in pregnancy, it can be uh, the treatment is based on which time the uh, mother got uh, chicken box. It could be five days before or five days after during the delivery time before five days or uh, during that you know just five days for delivery that time okay so how you will classify like this so if it's a near delivery period if it's a near delivery period and uh if the infected is more than five days before delivery near delivery period if the if it if they are infected more than five days before delivery then baby is protected no problem there is no problem the baby is protected safe okay 
But if it was five days before delivery, just five days is there. If it's more than five days, no problem. If it's just only five days is there for delivery. Or two days after the delivery, if she catches the chicken pox, that uh, in pregnancy it can be shingles also, then what happened? The child will get the neonatal varicella. Neonatal varicella, that's important. Severe form of the varicella, severe varicella. That's very, 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 very important. So remember this, this is based on five days only. Five days is a magic here, five days, okay? So if it is more than five days, no problem. But if it is less than five days before delivery, and then uh, more two days after the delivery, the child is high risk of getting neonatal varicella. So now, Congenital virus syndrome. So you're going to tell me this picture. This picture can be asked. It can be a pediatric question, also can be a microbiology question. Doesn't matter. So what are the and frequently asked? Very frequently asked is both the question. They can give picture or they can just give the name. So tell me what is this condition? When you get a congenital virus syndrome, what is this? This one, this one, you see limbs are there's no limb. So that is called limb hypoplasia. Limb hypoplasia is characteristic for congenital varicella syndrome, chicken pox. Please don't forget varicella zoster. Okay. Uh, uh, limb hypoplasia. The limb hasn't grown properly, limb hyperplasia. And what about this one? This, you can see scar. The skin is already scarred to the baby. So that's, that's what it's called, what? Psychastrical, psychastrical. Oh, my spelling. There's a spelling mistake, please. But please remember, it's called psychiatrical uh, lesion, skin lesion. Okay, psychiatrical skin lesion. That's basically scar, okay? That's a scar. So when you see like this, and the, uh, of course, in exam, they'll give you a clue. They'll give you this a pregnant lady uh, just before two days of getting delivery. She got chicken pox and the baby was born with this condition. I didn't feel the condition. So don't, they just simply, it's the congenital varicella syndrome. Or if they directly ask, which is the most common cause of psychiatrical lesion, herpes zoster, limb hypoplasia, herpes zoster. Finish. That's it. Don't think too much, okay? That's what I'm saying. Please concentrate. Micro is easy, easy, easy. It'll become more easy in further classes. Don't worry. I'll make sure that you will, uh, before exam, you will be like good with the micro. Okay. Uh, especially uh, exam going students. Uh, so now the primary infection happens during the pregnancy. So that's what. So this is microcephaly, limb hypoplasia or other. Microcephaly also can happen, but then characteristically, of course, you have a limb hypoplasia and secretary skin lesion. Okay. This is for the zoster. Uh, uh, that's a chicken box. Now we're talking about shingles. Shingles in the adult. So only one thing difference. What it's an adult patient and it's usually unilateral. Adults and unilateral. This is what I'm saying. This picture can be asked many times. It can be medicine, pediatric, whatever question it is. Uh, of course, it's medicine adult. So here, so you can have this rashes. You see, the rashes is along the neurotome, the neural line. Yeah, this is the the the, the nerves which are between the ribs, right? Intercostal nerves, intercostal nerves. So you see rashes there. Or you see just only this also unilateral 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 like this okay you can see only on the one side so now what's the problem the lesions are painful the most important thing is you have post herpetic neuralgia post herpetic neuralgia is very very common with the shingles especially chicken pox means pain 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 very bad pain okay that also you have to remember so okay so uh so unilateral i already told you single dermatome post herpetic neuralgia is very common and then you're going to treatment would be gabapentin or the pregabalin gabapentin pregabalin this picture is zoster ophthalmicus. This is zoster ophthalmicus because see, if the if it involves the ophthalmic nerve, then the patient has high chance of getting blindness. That's very dangerous part. Yes, there are people who got blindness also very commonly. So post herpetic neural gas common question, and then zoster ophthalmicus is also common question. Now you have a very interesting thing. You can say this. Can you see this? This is Justin Bieber, our favorite pop star, and see what happened to him. He got something. He, it looks like a facial nerve. Palsy, unilateral facial nerve palsy. What's that uh, syndrome name? It's called Ramsey Hunt syndrome. So hereafter, uh, the other nickname for Justin Bieber is Ramsey. Ramsey, Ram, Ram, Ram. You can call uh, Justin Bieber also Ramsey. Okay, Ramsey. So Ramsey Hunt syndrome. What happened here? Here, if you remember, the geniculate ganglion, which is the seventh nerve's uh, ganglion, has led him to Patient no palsy. That's important. Geniculate ganglion. You know this. Ramsay and syndrome is a common ENT question. And geniculate ganglion also can be asked. Which is the ganglion that is affected in the uh, Ramsay Hunt syndrome? That's also a question. Got it? Okay. Fine. So, uh, now, let's go to the uh, uh, Epstein-Barr virus and uh, cytomegalovirus. Whenever you talk about the uh, Epstein-Barr virus, you know, what, what is an Epstein-Barr virus? What is the disease that causes? It causes kissing disease or it is called infectious mononucleosis. Okay, that's one thing you always remember, Epstein-Barr virus. And Epstein-Barr virus causes what? 
what it causes? It causes a variety of cancers also. Yes. Now let's see. So uh, I give a shortcut for you. When you see Epstein virus, one guy you have to remember, Paul, 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 Mr. Paul. Paul likes to kiss and he gets what? EBV. EBV. Paul kisses and he gets EBV. I'm going to bring Henderson, Peterson, Peter also later on. Peter will come in the box uh, who gets this Henderson, Peterson bodies in Molluscum Contagiosum. That's Mr. Peter. Now we'll talk about Mr. Paul. Paul kisses and gets EBV, Epstein Barr virus. Okay. Now, why is it Paul? Because what is the test popular when you talk about Paul? Paul Bunnell test. Very important question. Frequently asked question. Paul Bunnell test. Paul Bunnell, Bunnell test. Okay. That is basically an heterophile agglutination, heterophile agglutination test. That means your primary infection, of course, B cells in the oropharynx and salivary gland. The disease is infectious mononucleosis, kissing disease, or glandular disease. Frequently asked again. Frequently asked. Okay. Yes. Now, Clinical feature, a fever, hepatosplenomegaly, lymphadenopathy, and atypical lymphocytosis because CD4 cell is going very high. So that is definitely called as what? Your uh, atypical lymphocytosis. Okay, rash after even the rashes of your ampicillin therapy. Cancers associated with EBV. Can you hear some cancers? Can you hear some lymphomas? Yes, it causes Burkitt, it causes Hodgkin, it's called non Hodgkin, all the lymphomas. And any special ENT cancer, I want to hear a ENT cancer, which is that cancer uh, which is caused by Epstein Barr virus. Yes, if you're saying nasopharyngeal carcinoma, you're right. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma, very good. Okay. And then, uh, so uh, uh, nasopharyngeal carcinoma and then all these uh, lymphomas are very common with your EBV. Okay. So we already talked about it. Yeah. One important thing here. Can you tell me what is this? If you see her, uh, the, the 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 cell here, Reed Steinberg cell. You see, it just looks like this. Okay, this one. This is common with what? Your Hodgkin's lymphoma. That's the question. This is the question we will ask. They'll give you a picture. They'll identify this. This is a normal lymphocyte. And this is this abnormal reed uh, Steinberg cell, which is Hodgkin. Somewhat it looks like a owl eye body, but not owl eye. Owl eye comes for, it's not owl eye. Owl eye is common for, which owl eye inclusion body is common for, which one? Cytomegalovirus. Because CM, CM chief minister always has what she is, CM Kejriwal or our Stalin, whoever it is. Every CM has an owl in their house. Remember like that. They have owl in their house. CM kepas kya hota hai? Owl hota. Please remember that. Owl. Owl are inclusion. So that's different. So anyway, you will not be confused. They'll give you proper questions. Accordingly only you will do. So it's a reed symbol cell which is seen in the uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. And uh, NASA Avenger Koshima, we already spoke. And what is this condition? Kashuma, this one, this one. Oh, this is not nasopharyngeal. This is something else. In the tongue, you have some white color patch. This is this is what? This is a oral leukoplakia. Oral leukoplakia. Oral thrush is different. You remember oral thrush? Oral thrush is caused by oral thrush. Also, common question. Oral thrush. This is oral leukoplakia, which is caused by Epstein Barr virus. But your oral thrush, it is common in HIV patient or pregnant lady, any immunocompromised patient, which is caused by candida. If you're saying candida, you are right. That is the right answer. Oral thrush, candida. Somewhat it looks like this, but of course you'll get a history when they give this uh, pictures or not. So don't worry. Now, so here is just uh, Epstein Barr virus oral leukoplakia. That Duncan syndrome is one common one. Duncan, Mr. Paul's friend Duncan. Paul's friend Duncan. Paul Kerr friend is uh, Duncan. Duncan is basically a lymphoproliferative disorder. That's it. This is very rarely asked question, but you never, you never know. You never know. Oral has leukopic, you can expect, but Duncan, uh, just read it. Okay. It's Paul's friend. So lymphoproliferative. Diagnosis, as already told you, we have Eliza's, not that importantly asked. The important is heterophytes, Paul Bernal test. Here we are using the, I'm very sorry. I told you sheep RBC. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. It is actually horse RBC. Sorry. There are few tests where sheep RBC is used, but here it is horse RBC. Horse RBC is used for the EBV. Heterophile test, horse RBC is used. Okay. To augment it with the patient's EBV. So, Paul Bunnell test means, Paul, Paul is what? Paul is what is this? EBV, Epstein Barr virus. Epstein Barr virus. That's it. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Cytomegalovirus, very simple. Again, once again, C ka ulta kar do, aise ho jayega, uske upar ek panch lagao, panch. So, it's a HHV5 is your cytomegalovirus. Okay. Now, here, as I told you, we already repeated question, largest herpes virus. Once again, I'm repeating, overall, your biggest virus is pox virus. Smallest is your parvovirus. But in herpes, the, log, the, the biggest one is cytomegalovirus. You can ask this question. Why not? Uh, oral or direct contact and congenital CV. In congenital cytomegalovirus, everything is C. That means C for calcification, microcephaly. Okay, like this. You will have microcephaly, cephaly, and then CNS calcification. 
very, very common. So these are uh, my calcification seen in many congenital diseases, but of course, CME also causes. And a blueberry muffin. Blueberry muffin, uh, you can see the rashes, the rashes are like blueberry muffin. So CM likes the uh, CM. Uh, you know what? The CM, he has two things. One thing, CM, KGL, or whoever you want, Stalin. One, they have owl, and second one, they like a blue uh, berry muffin. They also like a blueberry muffin. But remember, the blueberry muffin is characteristic for which one? Blueberry, blueberry muffin, CMV. Yeah, blueberry muffin. But uh, blueberry muffin is characteristic for which one? Rubella. Rubella. Ideally, most common, uh, this blueberry particular rash is very common in rubella. We are going to talk about it later. But remember, rubella congenital syndrome, but also it's seen in CMV also. That's what I want to stress. Okay. And uh, remember, as we told, infectious mononucleosis is commonly caused by Epstein-Barr virus only, but CMV also can cause. So many times the question was asked, uh, the patient has a symptom of infective mononucleosis or kissing disease or glandular disease, but his heterophile test is negative. If that type of question comes, 100% you have to mark what? CMV, cytomegalovirus, because in EBV, your heterophile test is positive, but in CMV, it is negative. This test is negative in CMV, cytomegalovirus. That is repeated in many PG questions also. Please remember, same infection mononucleosis picture, glandular fever kissing is whatever it is, but only difference was that Heterophile test is negative. When heterophile test is negative, that is CMB. If it is positive, it is EBV because heterophile test is for Paul, Paul, Paul. Mr. Paul has EBV, Epstein Bar wise. CM has what? CM has just an owl and he has a sort of muffin. He loves muffin. Okay, got it. Now, this picture by seeing only you should answer. If you die, this will be a direct question. They will give you, you know, HIV patient has some eye problem and they did a retina test. On the retina, this picture was seen. Identify which virus. What it can be? The most common cause of this is retinitis. The most common cause of retinitis in HIV patient is which one? Your CMV, very simple cytomegalovirus is the most, most common one. Here, this appearance is called pizza pie appearance. Pizza pie appearance. Pizza pie appearance. It, it likes, of course, it looks like a pizza, you know, pizza pie appearance. It looks like a pizza. It's like a pizza with, you know, all the pie or whatever, you know, pizza pie appearance. So do you remember the most common cause of retinitis in HIV patient is cytomegalovirus. Don't forget that. And uh, same retinitis when it goes in less than 50. When CD4 count goes less than 50, that causes the same. Transplant patient also, CMV virus is very common. Yeah, can be uh, multiple choice, maybe they can ask. In transplant patient is common. Diagnosis already we discussed. What do you see? Owl eye inclusion. Typical owl eye inclusion. If you see a reed Stenberg cells also looks like that, but don't get this reed Stenberg cell is seen in the Hodgkin's lymphoma and Hodgkin is caused by Epstein Barr virus. Okay. So don't confuse with that. You should see the question clearly and then write. Okay. So here, so this would be a owl eye inclusion. Owl eye. So main thing is Paul Bunnell test is to differentiate the CMV and EBV. If it is positive, it's EBV Paul Bunnell. If it is negative, then that is CMV. Owl eye. If you say owl eye, it's repeated, many times repeated question. You know, it's a guarantee question. These are guarantee questions. That since my time, it's repeating, repeating, repeating. I don't know why people love owl so much. I thought only cytomegalovirus, CM chief ministers like owl, but then it looks like all the microbiologists also like owl. Okay. So CM, owl, owl, CM. CM is owl. Chief ministers have owl, owl, owl. Please, if someone don't remember, please remember. Okay. Mm. That's it. Sample can be urine, PCR. And peripheral smear, you see, atypical ecotesis, uh, owl side, inclusion body. And treatment is again very popular for one, only for CMV, they ask always. I, I hope in my in Parma, they're going to teach that. But see, cytomegalus C, uh, C somewhat, if you do like this, it becomes G. So that is GAN cyclovir. GAN cyclovir. Cytomegalovirus CMV, if you make a, put a dash like this, then it becomes GAN cyclovir. That's it. Gancyclovir, post is another drug. Gancyclovir or valacyclovir, uh, acyclovir. These are commonly used drugs. Okay. Gancyclo, valacyclo, and acyclovir. That's it. So these are the uh, things. Now, the other topic, uh, the other DNA virus. We have completed till cytomegalovirus. The rest of the viruses uh, we'll discuss in the coming class. Okay. Thank you.